and welcome to the first vlog that I've ever done. Maybe it's the only one I will ever do, um, but there's a reason that I wanted to vlog this particular um, trip, adventure, new thing. <laughs> um, so this is the first time that I am going down to work at the Chelsea and Races one of the biggest lap dancing events um, in the UK, a yearly event, is, uh, is the horse racing. So for one week and one week only, um, Cheltenham are granted a temporary strip club license, as it were, it's called a TENS. Um, so there's this company called Eroticats and they run pop-up strip clubs for the whole week of the races, basically. And you get strippers coming from all over the UK. It sounds awesome. It sounds scary. I know nothing. You know, I've, I've been stripping for four years now. Um, so, you know, I've got, I've got experience under my belt. But I hear that Cheltenham is unlike anything. It's, it's in a different league. And I've been, basically, I'm just like... I am prepared to be unprepared. <laughs> that that is what I am telling myself. Um, I asked for just a little bit of advice on my Instagram stories from people who have worked there previously, and uh, yeah, they came back with all manners of very very interesting stories. But I'm excited. Um, I'm ready for the experience. I think I'm more nervous than I would usually be because I'm going on my own, like I'm doing this solo. I'm quite used to travelling on my own, it's not a problem for me, um, but going somewhere as big as this and as different as this and as new as this on my own is quite um, scary, but I am really excited. Um, I know I've got online friends that are going to be there. Um, so hopefully <laughs> if my facial blindness does not get in the way um, I can kind of connect with those people um, but yeah literally all I know is the venue I'm working at how much I'm paying um, the commission my hours that is it we've had a little bit of a not a, not a hiccup um, it basically Many of my friends and family over the weekend tested positive for COVID. Um, I'm still currently clear as of yet. I've been very apprehensive to start packing because I feel like if I pack, that will jinx it and then I'll test positive. So who knows? This video might not be worth anything <laughs> if I test positive in the morning before I go. But yeah, my poor partner, he's quarantining in the basement. So if you hear... That's him uh, dying down there and I feel terrible, but he's just like, let's keep you well. Um, let's get you out the house. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pack and hope for the best really. Um, yeah, as you can see, I've got all of my stripper garb just laid out here. Um, potential outfits that I can take with me. I'm only working uh, four nights of the races. I don't know how people do the full week, but you know, I'm still, you know, I vets are used to it. Um, maybe I'll get there one day, but four nights, I feel like is pushing it for me. Seen as, um, I don't, I don't ever work more than three ever in one week. Um, mainly because of my patience. I, can't, I just can't take people, <laughs> the kind of people that come in for more than three nights. So yeah, four's gonna be pushing the boat out for me, especially because the shifts are 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. So yeah, um, 11 hour shift. Not done that before. Um, we'll see how that goes. I've chosen to take my classic, these are falling apart, aren't they? <laughs> my classic, these are my, just my old, my boldies. Um, you know, they're dirty as fuck. Um, there, you know, my ride and dies, they will keep me, my feet not bleeding in 11 hours, I can't say comfortable, I cannot say that, 
<laughs> so I've got, um, you know, my classics. I bought some new ones for the races. Um, just some black ones. I've been wanting some black ones for ages. Anyway, just small ones. Um, I don't tend to wear big ones when I work ever. Um, mainly for comfort's sake. Maybe not a good idea trying to break in new shoes at the races. Maybe I'll just wear these one night and that will be enough. Um, but I'll do the hair dryer trick with the plastic to mould it to the shape of my foot before I go. I'm just going to leave these to one side so I remember to do that. So I'll definitely always take things like this because um, butt pimples are a massive thing when you strip. And if I'm going to sit down, I want my ass to be covered. Um, having said that, I hear that race week is so crazy that sitting down isn't really a thing that happens, which again, apart from working Christmas periods, which do tend to be crazy and off the charts and you don't sit down, I'm quite used to having those quiet times and sitting down and not really doing very much. So that will be something new. I'm gonna take like loads of socks and suspenders as well. Um, I used to not wear these or stockings or anything um, when I worked. I used to have bare legs. Um, but I found being on carpet, you get all the burns on your knees and stuff. So I always wear these now. Um, and especially because what happens at Cheltenham is they convert pubs and nightclubs and sometimes restaurants into these pop-up strip clubs. So I assume there's not going to be even carpet. I assume it's just going to be hard floor. So all the more reason to have protection on your knees. I'm thinking bikinis are gonna go down better than lingerie. I just I just got a feeling that that's how it's gonna be. I don't know, so I'm gonna take, oh, I think you're gonna love this. I love this, my favorite um, bikini actually. It's just so simple, but like, it looks so good on, like it's the tiniest little thing. I love it, um, so slutty. Uh, this is this is always oh my god this is like my favourite set ever. Um, it's a Victoria's Secret one, and I've had this since I was fifteen, so it's nearly ten years old now, and it's just it's still beautiful, it's still perfect, and um, it's lasted so nicely. Yes, it has been washed. <laughs> just checking. Um, and I, I, I grieved over this set for ages actually because um, I had I had a boyfriend at the time and I thought he had stolen I don't know if it was both pieces or just the knickers or just the bra but I thought he had stolen this really fucking expensive set that I'd saved up all of my pocket money to buy and I was so pissed off. I was so pissed off when we broke up. So I'm like, you stole my 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 baby, my lingerie. I hate you so much. Um, but then I found it years later, and I'm like, oh, you didn't steal it. Uh, he's still a dickhead. <laughs> yeah, I love this bikini. And the the club that I work in currently is more of a lingerie than a bikini club, like. Nobody would say anything if you wore a bikini, but it's kind of got that vibe. Um, so maybe I'm just like, hey, this is probably a chance where I'm going to get to wear all of my beautiful um, bikinis. Um, this is actually called a Spearmint Rhino bikini, reminiscent of the first club that I've worked in. I feel like this is really going to catch people's attention. Like, I love to wear bright colours to work, um, and especially if I... I'm going to try and stand out in a sea of a um, hundred plus strippers, as I'm told, then this is probably going to be um, pretty damn important. So it's the colour of money as well and people are going to win shit tons of money at the races so they're going to go, hey, that stripper's wearing green. I'm going to spend my green on her. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, right. Um, I'm always a sucker for pink. I love pink. Mm, I always, I just got so many beautiful pink things. Like, 
I die. I just don't know how to pick. I have got that slip on, but a skirt might be better and then I can show my tits. I'll pack it anyway. I'm already up to more than four sets, aren't I? But it's okay. I'll probably need the spare ones. I'm just gonna pack the rest of the pink stuff because you can never have enough pink. I mean, this little tie around is just fucking adorable, but it doesn't make my tits look that big. Some people are into that. Let's pack it. I don't usually wear black a lot, but I thought maybe, maybe just in case, this doesn't really look like anything off, but it is really nice. Um, maybe just as a backup. I feel like everything I've put in front of me today I've packed. It's just, it's not successful really, is it? Yes, I'm gonna pack this because I have this new, this is beautiful, but it squishes my boobs a little bit. So I doubt I will wear this, but it's come with like this really cute skirt thing. It doesn't look like much off. I actually saw a stripper at my club wear this and I just crept up to her and I was like, where did you get your lingerie from? Because I like it. Um, and she found me a little bit weird, but that's okay, especially because I kept asking her about it. I'm like, what size is it? Um, I'll probably wear the knickers with this, to be fair, but then I have a change as well in case I need it, so that's sensible. Do you know what? I am going to pack the bra anyway. You know what I'm going to say? Just in case. <laughs> You can never, you can never be too prepared, ever. All right, that's way too many sets. Outfits, sorted, heels, chosen, jewelry, need to choose. Um, but other than that, it's just all my boring stuff that I need to pack now. And you're not really interested in what bruise cream I use and what exfoliator I use. If I ever do a vlog again, like I don't, I, you know, I'm just doing this for fun really. Um, you know, I'm not gonna become one of those people that starts being like, hey, it's the skin products I use. <laughs> um, not that there's anything wrong with people that do that, but I don't have good skin. <laughs> right, I'm gonna sit here and painstakingly do these up now so that's going to be so much fun there's like a million eyelets um so yeah i'll see you in a tick i think we're done uh, that took way longer than what I have time for. I hope it looks okay. <laughs> and don't worry, I will, I'm gonna cut, I always cut out all the tags of my uh, stripper shit. I will probably do that off camera because that's fucking boring. <laughs> um, I bet you I've done all of that now, I don't even wear it. I will make this the first thing I wear. How about that, how about that? All right, so um, I guess I better pack the rest of my shit, get it all into a bag, all my toiletries, stuff like that. Then I need to go shopping, so I'm gonna get all of my food ready, with it being 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. Um, I'm really not gonna have time to do much else at all. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> this might be absolutely boring as shit, but I thought, hey, I don't feel like a lot of people may appreciate the effort that goes into um, preparing for tour. Just my food prep, so this is going to make up my dinner for uh, the four nights. I don't think it's going to be enough, which is fine because I've got a whole bag full of food and snacks as well. Um, and... Uh, this just, it, it A, saves me money, like I'm happy to spend money on takeaways, but it just takes the brain energy out of deciding what to eat, especially as someone with um, quite strict dietary requirements, being celiac, I can't eat gluten, um, it restricts my choices a lot, so this just makes life so much easier. Um, I've got my dinner on the go, um, and some of this is going to make up my, like, 
travel journey for tomorrow so I'm doing that at the minute and then here we've got the bread station um my lovely miniature gluten-free slices um so this is going to be my lunch or my dinner or whatever you want to call it my club snack so that's what I'm gonna eat can have little little cheese and ham hammy sandwiches guess who made it out of the covid household without catching it I'm still currently clear um so I've abandoned my poor partner who's left to fend for himself while I am away um but at least he can roam the house now and evacuate the basement um so yeah. yeah I didn't sleep great um and obviously I'm working tonight so about a three hour drive traffic being well stop off where I'm staying which is at a friend's um get settled in a little bit make up and then I'm straight into the club I'm um, go 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 until uh 5 a.m and then it all starts again for the next four days <laughs> So this is where I'm staying for the next few nights. It's so lovely. I'm staying with a friend um, and she's been very kind to let me stay with her. I've got everything I need, a bedroom, my own bathroom with a bath, which I'll be soaking in all night um, and even a dressing room. So yeah. Oh, little bean. Hello. Yeah, I'm wet, I know. Okay, I'm already mackied up, ready to go. Going to drive into town now, see what the parking situation is like. I'm super duper early, so it's fine if I have to hunt about a bit. Um, my friend's been really helpful, so hopefully it will be okay. So this is the venue I'm at for the next few nights in Cheltenham. It's called Two Pigs. It's usually a nightclub, but over this next week it's a strip club um so this is the floor where I'll be kind of doing all my hustling and stuff where customers will be coming in where we can speak to them um so there's one bar at the far end and then there's another bigger bar behind me there's also an erotic cafe which is awesome not that I can have any of the food but like things like pastries and sandwiches and stuff which I think is totally awesome this is just a little peek at what the upstairs lap dance areas look like. So it's all very makeshift. Um, this is actually one of the nicer areas. Um, I'll pop up some pictures of the other areas in a sec. But yeah, essentially they're voils on either side. There is a chair for customers to sit on and then there's a white line for you to stand behind. This is what one of the VIP areas looks like. There's only two of these. Um, so that's going to be interesting. Um, and then this is what like the general area looks like um, and it's it's absolutely tiny like your wardrobe is bigger than this I don't quite know how I'm going to even dance and move about in this um, but yeah voils all around I feel like we're going to be knocking in into each other but we'll see how it goes so each night we get a wristband the dancers get a wristband and it's got a number on that um, this is for a pretty clever system actually so your number goes on like everything including your bags for the cloakroom so I think the system is good. The way the system works is you take your customer up, they give over their money to Erotic Hat and then as dancers we get either chips or checks. So chips are if the customer has paid in cash and you get a different colour depending on how much a customer has spent. These are the checks and this is what you get if a customer pays via card. They're quite rigorous with the process actually which I think is good like they require quite a few things from the customer especially if they're spending large amounts um, and I forgot to mention things like house fee. So house fee for one night is £105 and then cloakroom is £5 on top of that. I think it's a bit cheeky they didn't really you know, why not just make it 110 and have done with it? Because, of course, everybody's going to be using a cloakroom. But there we go. Um, It's well above the odds for what I'd usually pay for. But, hey, this is a special event. I'm expecting to make good money here. So, at this point, I'm happy to pay that. Okay. Um, Out of respect for my lovely friend I'm staying with, I'm just going to record... Uh. Tonight's rundown in my car because there's a lot that I need to get off my chest. 
Um, first night working at Erotic at Chelsenham Races. Summing it up in one word. Shit. Garbage. Trash. Um, the worst night I have ever had stripping. And that's not just to do with the money. Um, or to do with the usual levels of assault that you tend to get with uh stripping um oh my god i i don't even know where to begin um and i think i think a lot of these things that i'm going to say will be um a common recurrence over the next um few nights so i'm going to save kind of the generalizations evaluations and conclusions until the end um but let me just give you a brief overview of my night the highs the lows just the shit um, get into the club um pay my 110 pound house fee plus cloak cream up front um sign a contract which was ever so rushed like i always read through contracts so i did read it um but they were really really rushing you and literally the only thing i get told is Make sure you stay behind the white line. If someone asks you to come behind the white line, do as they say without aggression. That's literally all I get. I don't get, oh, welcome. <laughs> Not that I'd expect that anyway, but I don't get like, um, oh, we'll show you around. Oh, this is how this works. This is these systems that we have in place. This is why we do this this way. Um, I didn't get any kind of induction or introduction Um at all um so that was my very very warm welcome to erotic cats see so yeah, i got there really early so i was on the floor ready for 5 p.m um already in my heels all ready to go and um, there were no dressing rooms by the way that's probably something i'll bring up in the conclusion um so you know i'm just sat out there in my shit ready to go um I instantly made friends with two absolutely lovely girls. That was like the high point of my night, like meeting someone all cat. Sorry, <laughs> it's a really cute cat. Is that? No, I don't think that is Oscar. It's a cute cat though. Uh, yeah, um, meeting nice person. Um, that was definitely. Oh fuck, light. It's all going wrong, isn't it? No, I'm not going to edit any of this out. I think it's funny, <laughs> and I need that after what for shit show this night has been um yeah lovely i met this absolutely lovely girl um and actually we were both having the shittest time but through that we were finding it funny and keeping each other picked up and you know um we're hunting together and you know working together and it, it was just really nice um to have someone that was kind of on on a level with me really really sweet person um and pretty much the only reason i can stand going back there is currently because of this person so i'm very happy about that is it that cat it's just come back very cute i might have to pause the video to go stroke 6 p.m comes obviously it's very quiet to begin with for the first maybe two hours it gets pretty busy after that but nobody's buying much because they're not drunk enough um so both me and this girl to be honest we were running around like headless chickens trying to hustle trying to go hard trying to do this trying to do that um which was maybe a mistake and something which i will learn from tomorrow maybe so yeah, I, I think I may take that on board for tomorrow to just chill out for the first few hours because it just can serve your energy for later on because I felt pretty burnt out a few hours in dealing with semi-sober people that weren't ready to see um, naked ladies yet. Fine. Um, feet were already hurting within a few hours because there's not really many places to sit. So just kind of standing on, on heels the whole time for that and kind of doing laps backwards and forwards of the club trying to speak to as many people as possible yeah then it started to get bad for me because 
people were starting to get dances. Like, I saw the girls going up. I saw the queues starting to perform. But I wasn't getting anywhere. And I don't know why. Because... I, I was being my peppy, spirited, beautiful, sexy self. Um, I was throwing every different sales tactic at the wall and it was just not sticking. And I don't know why. Um, I'd love to say it was one of those nights, but shit, I was on form. So I don't really know why I wasn't selling anything, but others were. Um, and my friend was having the same experience, so I don't know why why it was like that for both of us. Um, I don't know. Um, that that that's just made me feel really shit about my abilities as a dancer, as a stripper, as a salesperson, because I'm usually very good at that. Um, very good at that aspect so I don't know why I wasn't able to sell the way that I usually was able to stuff started to, to get even worse when um, I was starting to make some kind of progress and starting to get interest and people did want dances but the queues were ridiculously long to get up into the lap dance rooms so if you know the venue Two Pigs, if you live in Cheltenham or you've been there before, um, you've got your first set of stairs, which is where you go up to go for your lap dances. The queues were running from there all the way back to the smaller second bar at the other end of the club. That's how long the queues were. Very, very long. Um, so long that I stood in a queue for 50 minutes with a customer who was so, so drunk that I was trying to prop him up pretty much the whole way in my heels. Um, it was like babysitting for 50 minutes. So obviously that was testing my patience. Uh, so for us, for example, this one guy, which is probably a great description of how the night felt for me for most of the night. So we're in this queue. I'm babysitting this, you know, grown ass man who's just disgusting and horrible and assaulting me and he bit my tit actually not acceptable and I just kept telling him no but you know he was absolutely off his rocker out of his mind not on this plane didn't don't think he understood that we were in a queue because he's like I want to go for a dance I'm like yeah babe we're in the queue for a dance uh, we get to the front of the queue finally finally after several attempts of him trying to flee I'm like, no, this is the queue, please. Please, we've waited for 40 minutes so far. Don't do this to me, man. Um, and I get a massive drink spilt down me. I'm sodden wet at this point. I'm just like, great. Um, kind of in the same moment, I feel the skin split between my big toe and the rest of my foot on the sole of my foot. So I'm like, uh oh, this is not good. This is what 10 hours in heels does to you. Um, so I, I take my shoes off immediately because I'm in pain. He doesn't, well, I'd say he didn't know. Of course he didn't know. He's so drunk. He didn't, he didn't know what, what was what. <laughs> um, so yeah, I take my shoes off. So my feet are getting dirty and they're wet and it's just horrible. Um, I confirm with my guy. So I'm like, right, we're not going up there for just. 20 pound dance after waiting this long and you give me this much it's thousand pounds yeah yeah cool you got that in cash yep yeah, got that in cash he seemed very clear on that like okay great go upstairs wallet is empty wallet is totally empty okay he has a card thank fuck all of a sudden he's not okay with a thousand pounds okay well how much are you okay with well what what do i get for everything um, I've kind of sold some dreams at this point because I'm so fucking done with my life at this moment in time. So I've told him he can get away with pretty much anything and everything. Um, but it has to be for a price. He 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 wouldn't have got that anyway. But I, I was so done at this point. I don't usually sell dreams, but I just... Mm, I just couldn't. I just couldn't. He was being an ass, so he got that treatment. Um... And he was like, I don't know, I'm like, £800? And he was like, yeah, sure, okay, fine. He didn't seem happy about it, but he was like, okay. 
Carl declines. <laughs> Fucking declines, people. It declines. So we are step to one side so we can sort this shit out. He does have another card. Um, he cancels it himself on the machine. He's like, no. I'm like, okay. So we're not going for a dance at all? And he's like, no, I'm just done. I'm like you've literally wasted my time you've wasted so much of my time but he, he didn't give a shit so that's what happens when you stand in a queue for nearly an hour um without money guarantee because you just can't everybody was paying by a uh, card for me so i didn't really have an option um to take the cash downstairs but i just uh, shitty system shitty system there was money like I had one guy brag to me that he'd won 25k, but did he want to spend any of it? No. <laughs> I don't care what you've won. You don't want to spend it on me, so fuck off. Oh, I took two guys for a lap dance at the same time, which was nice because it was double bubble, so fantastic. Um, and <clears throat> had my back turned to them. I, I turned back to face them. One guy has just been sick in his hand. He wipes it on his jacket, looks at me as if I haven't seen. And I was just like, oh. the humanity of it all. Um, I just go, are you okay? He's like, yeah. His friend saw the whole thing as well and didn't seem very concerned. So I just stood right the way back for the rest of the dance. Um, oh, we had a police raid. But I didn't know because... <laughs> All I got told was to stand behind the white line, even though I was on the white line. I was on the on the line, on the line, but I had to be behind the line, and I got multiple people be very, very aggressively aggy about me being on the line rather than behind the line. Um, had I known it was because of police raids fair enough but like i wasn't doing anything wrong but yeah i did i did my final rounds and i thought i think i'm just gonna call it and i got to half two and i thought yeah let's just let's just call it um because even if i managed to find someone to do a dance with um we would have had to wait nearly an hour in the queue so that would have taken us to about four there would have been an hour left, so I would have only maximum managed to gain um, an hour with a customer. And, that, you know, at which point the, the card may, may have declined again. You know, I just didn't know what was going to happen when we got to payment point. Um, so, and I also I heard from some of my friends that um, when they finished um, at five... Last night, um, it took them an hour and a half to cash out because there were so many dancers. And I just thought, I could go home early. I could just go home early and um, start again tomorrow. Let's start again tomorrow because this has been a shit night. Um, so with that, um, I go to cash out and just kind of the, the cherry on, on top, which I, I knew was a thing when coming to dance here but it's just just shit really um is so they've already taken my house fee for that night i paid up front in cash the money that i did earn after um the commission that they had taken off which was more for card um which all of my dances were cards so i, I didn't earn as much as i could have um all of that money was put towards house fees for the remainder of my uh, days working at the club. And I think um, my fee covered Thursday and Friday's house fee. So regardless of how, however bad I feel about Eroticat and I really don't want to go back, I'm locked in. I have to go back um, and I will have to pay Saturday's house fee out of tomorrow's earnings if I earn anything. Yeah, uh, I, I, I complained to the management. I said, look, I'm really not impressed with this. This is a shambles. I'm actually really disgusted. Obviously, I was very professional about this because I am. That's my way. Um, and they didn't. Oh, 
why why did I think they were going to give a shit? Um, but they were just like, you can send an email in the morning if you if you want to complain. I was like, I will. And at this point, I'm not going to because I'm tired. I need to sleep. If I'm going to send a complaint, it will be at the end. I wish I'd stayed at home. I wish I'd just gone to my lovely local club and um, worked there, worked my arse off for four days. And I would have come off richer, happier and better all round. Um, yeah. Hmm. So I'm going to go sleep now after that massive run. I hope tomorrow brings bigger and brighter things. Um, it may seem like I have the most stinky attitude right now. And to be fair, I do. But I, it doesn't really shine through in my hustle too much. Um, but I am going to try and sleep it off and start afresh tomorrow. All right, folks. <laughs> It is day two. Um, I'm just having a little chill before I get ready. Um, I've had about six hours sleep, um, not enough, and it was pretty shitty quality. I tend to dream if I'm doing really intense shifts. I when I'm dream, I, I'm still there. So um, pretty much had dreams about the similar kinds of things that were happening. Um, last night so I don't particularly feel very well rested really kind of settling on the way last night was I don't particularly want to go back there and work um, but I'm gonna try I'm gonna try and give it another go tonight I'm gonna take it night by night if it's really really bad again tonight I'll reconsider how um, I go ahead with Friday and Saturday um, I think my main concerns at the minute are if I make anything tonight they will have taken my house fee for Saturday as well so um erotic cats have my my money basically and I don't know what my rights are regarding that because I have agreed to work the four nights so I don't I don't think I'm entitled to my money back but I don't know if that's like literally holding me ransom and what my workers rights are even so I, I don't see how I'm going to get my money back um so I'm not sure on that front really um and also because my poor partner is still ill with covid I don't really have a house to go back to so I'm kind of just stuck here and therefore I might as well work and try um but look, new day, new hustle, new thing. It's St. Paddy's Day today, so I'm going to wear green <laughs> um, and see if I have the luck of the Irish on my side tonight. thought about ways of how I can strategize differently going forwards with tonight. Um, I've, I've very much come to the conclusion that last night's lack of success was not down to me it was luck and um yeah not really much that I could have done differently other than maybe conserve some energy at the beginning of the evening um so I'm gonna try and take that on board tonight and not go full gung-ho but then again once the lines get too long what's a girl to do um so maybe just picking and choosing customers a, a bit a bit better but when you've got a hundred plus girls or dancers, you don't you don't really have uh, the pick of the litter. You don't really have the choice. It's who gets in there first. Um, so I don't think I'm going to do much differently tonight because I don't think I did anything that wouldn't have worked. I just didn't have the luck. Kitty, 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 you are so damn pretty. Yes, come here then. Come up. Yes. Oh. Oh, good boy. Oh, yes. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, little boy. You padding? You kneading? You making them biscuits? Yeah. Oh. Oh, good boy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, look at the butt. 
lovely 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 boy Uh, so, night two. Better than the first night. Better than the first night. Um, not fantastic. Not even good. Um, I did make some money, so I'm, I'm pleased about that. But again, considering I've worked 10 hours, I would expect to make a lot more than that. Um, because of how shit Erotic Cat system is. Um, I didn't make as much as I would have made had the queues not been so fucking long. I, I paid off my house fee for tomorrow night and, um, yeah, I did take home some cash tonight. So that's nice. Um, a really good part of tonight was making more friends and, um, hooking up with old friends and just having a really nice time with the girls and the other dancers. Like that was just so much fun. And, um, I played stuff very differently tonight. I took my time a lot more, um, uh, in, in the beginning part of my shift, conserved a lot of energy, um, and that, that really helped to have more energy later on and to have a, a higher bandwidth of patience for um, the drunk people coming in later. I thought I'd try slightly different hustle tactics. I'm nice. <laughs> and I sell nice. That's what I sell. Um, because that's just my way. That's just who I am. And literally so many customers last night and tonight kept on saying, you're too nice. You're too nice. I don't like it when people say that because that perpetuates the narrative that strippers are supposed to be horrible or bitchy or um, direct or hus hustlers, really. Um, and it's like, we can't be nice. It's really like just dehumanising as fuck, to be honest. And it's like, we're not people, we're not humans. Um, so I don't like that. But there is an element of truth. In that, there, there maybe is such a thing as too nice to the point where maybe if I pushed a bit harder, I would make the sale. Um, so, I just, yeah, I don't know. I can't really change who I am. Um, I like being too nice, to be honest. I like that about me. I, you know, it's what makes me who I am. And um, it's why the people that do buy dances with me love me because I'm nice. <laughs> Trying to learn from last night, listening to what's going on around me, talking to the other dancers. Too nice is not going to fly in this environment at all. I've got to act, change my way to get what I want. Um... Just even observing the way that some of the other dancers are behaving, like, I don't really like that. I don't, I don't like the way, it's not, it's, it's not that even I don't like it, it's just not me to be so pushy, so direct, so forceful, like literally dragging someone, um, and getting their card out for them and going, hey, we're doing this, uh, whether you like it or not. It's not really me. Um, but I thought, hey, let's try something new. Let's try something different. Um, and if it's not for you, it's not for you. So I tried to be a bit more direct. I wasn't super pushy with most people. I was quite pushy with a few people. Um, definitely worked in my favour, to be fair. Like, I didn't think it would be my style. I don't like it. It doesn't feel good for me. But I feel like that's the only way I can survive in this environment and thrive and make some money. Um, so I tried. Customers were definitely responding more to the direct nature of that um, in such a fast-paced, highly overcrowded, competitive as fuck environment. I feel like being that bitch is the only way to really thrive. I took the time to go outside, which I didn't last night. And you know what? I think I felt all the better for actually just stepping out for a sec and 
um, not being around the rabble, the riffraff, the noise, and just taking time to eat, recharge, have a break, have a minute. It did slow me down, but actually I think I needed that. So yeah, it was just nice to be with other dancers and connect and have fun together and, you know, uplift each other. That that was like the biggest thing, uplifting each other. And we did so throughout the whole night and that was lovely. Tomorrow I will take a few more breaks later on. Um, I think it's because as the time goes on, I'm getting more and more anxious about making money. Um, but that also comes with the price of not looking after myself properly like I was so dehydrated I'm I am dehydrated like I need so much water right now um because between dancing and waiting in queues and then going around to talk to people it was hard it was so hard to try and get enough water in my system best customer of the night was this absolutely lovely guy who works as a bouncer when the club is a normal nightclub and he was so sweet he was so embarrassed <laughs> to be in there um as a customer getting a lap dance um and oh what if someone recognizes me um he was so nice he was so lovely do you know what i don't think he was that nice it was just because i've dealt with so much shit i'm like oh slightly decent person wow <laughs> um yeah he was just really sweet like he was so happy throughout our dance he didn't try and haggle me with the payment like I think he found it very pricey but he was happy to pay what I asked for and that was just nice for him to be like okay it's expensive but I've got this um and yeah, he was just really nice throughout the dance and really respectful and really grateful and just sweet all round, really. Bad part of the night. Holy shit. This is just unreal, really. So, um, wasn't my very last dance of the night, but it was towards the end. Um, ridiculous cue. Like, again, as bad as it was last night really waiting so so long to even just get upstairs um and i was waiting in the queue with this very very well off guy very rich so my light's gone off uh yeah very rich guy who didn't want to wait in the queue but hey he liked me and he was like okay fine i guess we'll wait i'm like thanks I don't want to wait either. <laughs> um, so we waited in the queue. He was fucking hilarious. He was the absolute replica of Jack Whitehall, like spit image. So that was pretty funny. Um, and he was really funny like Jack as well, to be fair. Like we were having all the banter, all the fun. I just, I don't even know how to tell this. It, I'm just so embarrassed. Um, finally get to the front of the queue. And um, we wanted to have a, an hour together to start with, you know. it. He would have paid for me all night. He really would have. Um, wanted to start with an hour. Can we go get a nice room or a nicer room? Bigger space, just to ourselves. However because the same girls had been in VIP all night from, you know, very early on and those clients were topping up so there was no sign of them coming out ever. Um, it was either a choice of waiting for the room, which probably wouldn't have ever happened, or going um, somewhere where this guy really didn't want to be. Um, so we, we obviously went with the second option, um, which I'm like, I felt really bad about, but there really wasn't anything I could do. And the staff was so horrible about it. Like you've got this guy that's going to spend good money and you're treating him like a, a bag of shit. Like it's not okay, but okay. Treat me like shit. Cause they were treating all the girls horribly. Um, but, like, to treat customers like that, too, it's really not on. And it's really off-putting. And it's, like, people are spending... Some people are spending good money and you're going to treat those like shit. Right, okay. So, 
yeah, we got to the till. He pays what we agreed on despite not having the environment that I was hoping to acquire for us. Um, his only request was that we have champagne. Like, please, can we have drink service? Like, of course, he's happy to pay. Please, whatever we need to do. They made it so difficult for us to find out how to make that happen. It turns out there was someone that was kind of walking up and down that we could grab and um, help us get some drinks upstairs for us. But it was such a faff to even do that. Um, the people taking his payment was so rude to him. Like, I just... The way they were speaking to him was just horrible. Um, and they had the cheek to ask for a tip. It's not on, really, is it? <laughs> and I looked at them like, really? And then they gave me the snottiest look back because I'm like nearly laughing in their face because I'm like, you delivered the shittiest service and you're asking for a tip. What? Um, and they found that quite incredulous. And I'm just like, you hear yourselves, right? You, you're hearing how you're talking to this this person, regardless of how much they spend. You you hear how much this stinks, right? Laughable. Um, I joked with him. I was like, we should have said you're actually Jack Whitehall and you're a celebrity and you need the treat, <laughs> which he found funny. Um, so I was trying to keep it light, trying to make him laugh about it, because really, what else can you fucking do as a dancer in that situation? Like, it was just horrible. So anyway, we um, get to his incredibly shitty royal booth. It's like curtains all the way around you with a scene from the pictures. He was not impressed. He was not happy. Um, I thought he was going to walk out at that point, to be fair. Um I did say it wasn't going to be what we had hoped for. Um, I, I hope he didn't feel grifted by me. I, I don't think he did. Um, but I, I felt really bad. I felt horrendous. It gets worse. So, you know, he sits down. He's try, kind of trying to come to terms with what the fuck is this shit. <laughs> um, and he's like, all right, can we just get some drinks? Can we get some champagne up here? Um, so he talks to the guy that's, um, doing the drinks runs and like, um, asking for some champagne and he's not really sure what's going on. Like he doesn't know what kind of champagne they have, doesn't know if there's even any champagne, like he knows nothing. He doesn't know how much anything is either. So he just bungs him a load of money to get what he can, comes back with one glass, one glass. <laughs> and uh let's just call him jack his name isn't jack but he looks like jack whitehall so let's just do it and jack's just like uh, i want you to have some too of course like you're entertaining me and we're having a conversation and we're trying to connect like i want to share this with you obviously duh um so he just <laughs> send send them back down for another glass which they bring up I pop my drink by the edge of the curtain. It's in my my space, my very, very, very small space. Like this is so small that if I'm kneeling, I'm taking up all of the space, literally. And I'm not, I'm not tall. <laughs> That's how big the space is. That's how much space you have to dance. Um, and that would be over the white line too. So, um, yeah, I I put the drink just inside of the curtain um and these brash motherfuckers come up to the curtain it's one guy in particular who's really just oh my god step not even stepping a foot out of line because you're not doing anything wrong but like anything that there is to complain about or pick on or uh, frisk you about he'll do it and he's like um you can't have your drink there I'm like, we don't have a table because we're in a fucking uh, not even big enough wardrobe. Where, where, where do I put it? He's like, I don't know, but you can't have it there. I'm like, mm. of course, all in front of the customer, not professional. Yeah, bearing in mind, this room was so, or well, booth was so small that, and people were drunk as well. And like people like knocking into us from either side. 
I would worry too much about it in like someone that wasn't like this type of customer, someone that wasn't paying as much as him. Even though I still don't think it's good, like nobody should have that shitty service, but like other people would be okay with that. But he wasn't, and I wasn't. I didn't feel comfortable with that. People like knocking into each other, not sorry, knocking into us. Like people's feet were coming into our space, like underneath, and I, I just, I can't even. It was just horrible. Um, topping off the uh, experience for us, the icing on the cake. Oh my god! So the same guy that wasn't happy about my drink. Um, didn't like how my customer was sitting and asked him to sit differently please because you can't sit like that bearing in mind my customer was doing nothing wrong he was a little bit forwards out of his chair just away from the back of the seat because he didn't want to sit like that which is reasonable that's fine he wasn't doing anything wrong um and uh, this guy, the, the staff, is like, you have to sit back on the chair, like, all the way back. Um, and he kept on saying, he came in and pushed the customer back. Well, bearing in mind, like, coming across me while I'm naked, and I'm just like, holy shit. Um, yeah. So, telling my customer how he should sit what how unprofessional is that how unnecessary is that how ridiculous is that i just you can't make this shit up really i can't believe that i was so mortified so mortified i've never been more mortified in my life than that moment like what the fuck do i say how can i make this better um and yeah this poor guy, he said, everything has been horrible. You have been wonderful and you're lovely, but this is just not acceptable. I'm like, you're right. It isn't acceptable. I'm really sorry. Um, so that's how that interaction ended. Of course, he didn't go for any more dances. Why would you? Why would you if you want to spend good money you want the luxury experience, you're happy to pay for the luxury experience and you get delivered that shit. Other different things that came out of tonight, just working the system differently and being smarter. Perhaps this is a bit cheeky, um, but um, I teamed up with another girl who suggested this idea and I thought it was brilliant. So because the queue is so long, why don't we wait in the queue without anybody? And we can try and along the queue hustle people. And if we get nearer to the front and we haven't got anyone, we can go off one by one and try and bring people back while holding our space in the queue, one of us staying there. I thought, what a fucking fantastic idea. Obviously, it wouldn't work if everybody fucking did it. Um, but this was just kind of trying to cheat the system and trying to get ahead of the curve and you know well we're standing around not making any money anyway so we might as well stand in the queue ready to make money <laughs> i thought it was, this was genius um and lo and behold like two angels that dropped out of the sky they were kind of attracted to us like magnets because we were already halfway through the queue and um yeah got, got a few dances out of them and it worked and that that was great um it Okay, it's it maybe that was a really shitty thing to do, but I think this is better than jumping the queue and cutting in, which is what a lot of dancers were doing, and I think in part why um the queues were so long because people kept cutting in. Not fair, it's not right. I've had so many dancers try and slice me up um tonight and last night and it's just not on. It's not on. Um and you try and confront them and go, hey, look, there is a queue. You know, we're all trying to do our thing here. Would you kindly move behind, please? And they're like, I've been here all along. What are you talking about? Like, you want to start a fight? I'm like, no, not really. Okay, fine. Stay here. I'm going to tell security. They don't fucking care. Um, yeah. Shit system. Overall, 
better night, made some money, had good times with friends, slightly better customers. Um, I've learned a lot tonight. I've learned about trying a different style of hustle, even if it's not for me, I'm trying. Um, I got a lot out of the experience, to be fair. It's, I'm learning masses absolute masses like maybe you know in another five years of doing this job um my my style of hustle will be completely different and more similar to the one that's going to make me more money but in the meantime I'm quite happy being a nice girl I'm this has made me so grateful of my local club and I'm so happy to get back there and be more of the um, nice, bit more social dancer that I enjoy, enjoyed being, but I didn't realise that I enjoyed that as much as I do. So I'm looking forward to going home, <laughs> really. Um, but I'm, do you know what? I'm ready for the next two nights. I'm ready to continue the experience. I'm ready to learn more. I'm ready to have more good times with friends. You know, now that I'm making a profit, I'm ready to let go of the fear of not making money and focus on just broadening my horizons and um, channeling that infinite wealth that will hopefully come flooding my way. Um, no, I'm not going to say it's not going to happen. I'm not going to say that, but I hope I'm that one of those bitches in VIP tomorrow that's there all fucking night. Um, and maybe I'll learn even more to help me get there earlier and stay there. Fuck, this is hard. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Like, I was not ready. Nobody would be ready. It's going to take a lot of time for me to process everything um, and get over a lot of things that have happened. But yeah, right, it's getting light outside. I really need to sleep. I will see you tomorrow. Roll on day three. I've fucking got this shit. Here we go. Waking up. Um, feeling pretty anxious. I guess that's what happens when I do a few nights on the trot that are pretty heavy and um, and you're holding your breath for 11 hours or so um, and that's kind of what happens when, well, <laughs> it's just how I hold myself, my posture and keeping everything, um, I don't like the term but sucked in, oh wow. Um, yeah, so anxiety's pretty high, woken up, um, so I'm just, I'm lucky though because I've got a boy, <laughs> so I'm just trying to <laughs> chill out, calm down, and um, hopefully get a few more hours in, I'm fucking shattered, oh, wow, okay, okay. Didn't manage to get back to sleep, fortunately. Um, I, I've just been listening to like a bit of podcast and, um, stroking the lovely boy who is, uh, still currently on the bed. So that's really sweet. Um, and just trying to rest, um, working intensely like this is hard for me. Um, especially because all I can think about is work when, even when I, even when I'm trying to rest, I had the same thing last night or this morning, um, like dreaming about work. And, uh, so even though I'm not there, it kind of feels like I'm there and I'm constantly analyzing and reanalyzing, uh, my performance, what I can do differently, how I can make things better um what went right what went wrong uh 
Uh, it's exhausting. It's utterly exhausting. Um, but I've managed to find at least a few moments of peace, which is better than nothing. Um, so yeah, I'm currently running on five hours sleep. Um, I generally need about nine to be fully functional. Um, so obviously I didn't sleep very well the night before. <laughs> I'm probably not going to sleep very well um, after tonight because um, my body's just running on adrenaline at this point. Um, I think tonight's going to be hard. Um, I found it was getting that way last night as well. Like caffeine's not really doing it for me in the same way it usually would or as it did on the first night um, I can really see why um, some if not a lot of uh, strippers and just late night workers in general um, have to turn to some harder stuff to cope with the long hours, the long nights, the switching from days to nights, the lack of sleep. Um, it's personally never been a part of my lifestyle. Um, it's not going to happen. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I, I... Not that I didn't understand before, but, like, I can see how easy it would be for me to just, you know... Um, take uh, extreme measures to not feel this fucking shit because man do I feel shit uh, so I'm going to get up now um, boot and rally make up, just try and preserve my energy eat some good food um, I'm going to pack two Red Bulls tonight <laughs> um, and many many Coca-Colas and hopefully that will help um, I feel like I'm using these videos, video logs at this point to like kind of uh, boot and rally myself to kind of therapise myself to talk through things and motivate myself because fuck is this hard and doing it on my own as well like um, yeah let's hope I can make a bit more money tonight let's hope people are a bit less shit tonight it's um, gold cup, gold cup that's what it's called the races today um it's like the biggest the biggest night um so i think it's going to be even bigger than st paddy's was last night uh so it's going to be intense um i'm going to pick and choose the people that i interact with tonight and try and just tune into people's wavelengths a little bit more the best that I can as and when I get the opportunity um, so yeah I'll see you soon okay 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 night three fucking hell i got lucky ridiculously lucky um much better night money wise kind of more the type of money i was expecting to making don't get me wrong it's not ridiculous amounts um i could probably turn that in my local club if I really, 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 really tried and had a really good night. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was good money. I'm very happy with what I made tonight, especially considering how shit the past two nights have been. Um, so right off the bat, I was having, um, dances at 6 PM, which is great. You know, very, very short ones, like £20 ones. But, I, you know, there was no queue at that point. So I was happy to do that. And, you know, that was all cool. Um, I needed to go to the toilet. So I did so. And this stripper comes out of nowhere and is like, hey, are you free? I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> and she's like, do you want to come in a, v a VIP with us? I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, please um fuck yes so she drags me 
into a VIP. It's the first time I've been in that big room um, so far. And um, she was just the most epic thing I have ever witnessed. And that is why I'm not getting in that room. And I won't get in that room tomorrow unless I hit, uh, you know, pure luck like that. God, she knew what she was doing. But it's like, I will never be that. And I'm okay with that. It's a very specific type of hustle. My God, I just, I don't even know how to describe it. She was a bitch. The biggest bitch you have ever seen. But the men were paying. I can't work out why. I can't work it out. Like... She was horrible to them. She was telling them exactly what she thought of them. Um, she wouldn't put up with any shit. Um, she was throwing about false promises left, right and centre. She would chat the chat and walk the walk. Um, but yeah, like, you know, she was just being really horrible to the customers. But they just kept paying. They kept paying. And it's like... Do you enjoy the... It's borderline abuse, like borderline abuse. But I, I kind of took it more as you're being really rude. Um, but that's how these girls are working it. That's how these girls are doing it and making the shit ton of money here. And she was not happy because we were only making hundreds. She wanted thousands. And it was not good enough that we were only making what we were making. I, I was fucking happy with the hundreds. Thank you very much. Um, I was so happy with the hundreds. But the, again, these are what this is what these girls are like. This kind of cutthroat, it's never good enough kind of um, feeling and vibe and never grateful and just rude but my god she was incredible she was a bitch but she was incredible and it was like it was amazing to watch that hustle up close for hours and just I still don't get it I still I, I get it, I understand, but I could never emulate that. I could never do what she does. I don't understand how I could apply that to my look, to my personality, to my vibe, to anything that is me. It was just special and... Uh, wow, yeah, it, it was just incredible to watch, really. Like, I would have gladly paid to have seen how these girls are doing what they're doing and I got to see that and I feel incredibly lucky to have just been going to the toilet and her grabbing me so I I struck potluck there don't get me wrong some of the worst hours of my life in that room it was just just so horrible um the guy that I spent most of the time with and kind of chatting to he was massively trying to um, coerce me and do all manners of things with him. And it I couldn't really say no to promising those things because of how the other girl was working. So I was kind of trying to play along with it. I didn't feel comfortable with that. But um, again, like this week has been all about trying new things for me and just seeing what happens if I'm trying a different style of selling a different way of conducting my service and the the dance even though she, I don't think she even danced she didn't even dance she just literally sat there with her back turned to these men and smoking her uh fucking vape and just asking for more money when she felt like it really and just complaining she was complaining the whole time um but the level of coercion he was so forceful he was so adamant that this was going to happen happy to pay whatever to make it happen and that's partly why he kept on paying for more and more time I was just trying to stall really and distract and find other ways and that was so emotionally exhausting and to have the same cyclical conversations over and over and over again and he was trying to get me pissed 
massively pissed so i would lose my head and not know where i was and just go along with it which is rape it's sexual assault um horrible um i did drink quite a lot actually and i never drink when i work so that was a new thing because do you know what i was just so done with this week and i really needed something to take the edge off especially if i'm going to be dealing with twat heads like that so um i did drink quite a bit i i would never drink enough to be out of my mind i was very aware of what was going on but i was buzzing like i i was having a great time on the alcohol um it was really helping me to like kind of not lose my shit with this dickhead um but try and keep the vibe as light as possible um yeah no i i i enjoyed having some stuff to drink tonight and it it made me uh really really happy so <laughs> um i'd hate to think that the lesson out of that is that i need to drink more at work or drink at work full stop because uh, I don't really want to get into the habit of doing that, especially when I, you know, I am driving later. I, I know I'm more fun when I'm drunk, like really fun when I'm drunk, um, and that really shines through with customers. So I, I get that it would be better from a hustling perspective for me to be on drink while I'm at work, but it, I don't want to do that really. After the guys have had enough <laughs> finally after hours and hours of not really getting what they wanted this epic bitch stripper being so horrible to both of them <laughs> um once they'd finally had enough um i went for a break which then turned into the end of my night i you know i i went out to um the little tent place um i you know, i did try and do a sweep round um before going there but by that point the queue had got so long again like at least 45 minutes at that point and i thought i've made my money i'm really happy with what i've made i'm drained as fuck i'm tired as fuck um let's have a break and see how we feel afterwards so i went for my break um i had eat sobered up a bit a lot <laughs> um spoke to some mates uh one of my mates wasn't doing too well so i was just sat with her and just kind of giving her a bit of a pep talk and uh, she, she i love her so much she's amazing she was destroyed and distraught and just like um kind of how i felt the first night like i'm shit my hustle is shit um i'm not even resilient resilient enough to be able to deal with this situation uh i need to break down right now um so i was just kind of trying to sit with her and you know talk some logic into her because she is obviously worth 10 times what this whole experience is like and it is not an accurate reflection on anyone any stripper any dancer and you know it is the hardest graft probably i don't i don't want to say out there because you know i i don't know shit but like it it is such hard graft and when you've got oh hello <laughs> when you've got about 200 dancers working um in one night with only 30 booths um and the men are being shit and the staff are being rude and horrible and impolite you've either got to be the bitch like that girl i work with or you've got to be fucking lucky like me tonight um you're not gonna make money any other way um or you know the kind of money that we were all hoping to make this week um so yeah you know i just sat with her for a while and i thought i think it's home time for me like i'm happy with what i've made i went in i looked at the queue and i thought nah i don't want to wait an hour i can't deal with that i'm tired i want a bath i want to sleep um yeah i'm happy to leave it here so yeah um i think 
what topped it off for me. <laughs> Again, I'm going to totally rip into them uh, at the end of this experience. But the staff at Eroticats, I just, I, you won't even believe this. Like, I, I queue up to cash out. They are very quick, very, very, very quick. Um, or in my experience, they've been quick. I know other girls have had different experiences, but like, it's usually in out, in out, in out, like really, you know, bam, bam, bam. There we go. Um, here's your money off your pop. Um, very regimented, very uh, to the point of being rude is the only way to describe it and just clinical and horrible. Um, like literally they do not give a shit about the dancers unless you're making money. Um, side tangent, which I discovered tonight because I was making money, they would treat me totally differently when I was in that, uh, VIP booth. Like the favoritism was unreal. Like they were, they were actually starting to speak to me like a human because they were getting tips at that point off of me. Um, so that was like, oh, okay, I see how it is now. <sighs> yeah. Um, but anyway, I finally get into cash out and um, they sort it out. My money's there and they're like, okay, you can leave now. I'm like, can I count my money, please? Because I just want to check. And they're like, rather you didn't because that's wasting our time. <laughs> I'm just like, do you know, fuck this. I'm just going to grab my cash and go. Like, I being spoken to like that. I I have no words. I have no words. Another story I forgot to tell you about last night. Um, <laughs> so I take someone up for a dance. His friend gives me £30 um, to take him for, for a dance. Usually the dancers are 20 or 40, but, you know, I thought halfway in between would be fine. Or a £10 tip whatever so we get upstairs i've got the money from his friend i go to give it to the staff and they rip into me they were like you can't do that it has to be the customer giving um the cash to us um it i don't have a problem like like i get where they're coming from um but you can see that he is willing um, and it's only because I've got the money from his friend. Um, you know, I've not, I've not just like cashed, like stolen it out of his wallet or whatever, but it, it wasn't even like the, um, the logic behind it. It was the way that they were dealing with me and I felt so attacked and, um, they were just being so hostile and I'm like, whoa, okay, fine. Let me give it to him. They handed it, sorry, he handed it over to them um and she said it's 30 where's the extra 10 for the 40 pound dance i said that he just gave me 30 like i you know um that that's what it is she said you've you've squirreled away the 10 haven't you you've stolen 10 pounds from us where's the 10 so i swear like this just 30 pounds like i <laughs> this is in front of the customer i can't make this shit up um yeah, like, I, you know, I haven't done anything. Like, I, you know, I'm totally innocent. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's just £30. Um, either I can ask my customer to add, throw in an extra 10 or I can have the £10 as a tip. Like, what, what do you want to do here? And uh, she's like, I'm going to search your bag because I don't believe you. I'm like, I, I shouldn't... Do you know what? I shouldn't have said okay. I didn't really have a choice. She kind of actually just grabbed my bag off of me and... I, uh, I don't even know, like, I've been assaulted in so many ways this week, and, you know, there just comes a point where saying no is too hard, it's too hard, um, and she goes through my bag, and I, you know, I had £10 personal cash on me for my drinks, in a little, like, it was buried at the bottom of my bag, I have a little, tiny little, um, drawstring thing that I keep my personal cash in so it's separate from anything else that might be in my bag that's work related and she goes that's our money you you've stolen that haven't you and I finally talk some sense in turn explain like that's my personal cash 
for the bar like it's nothing to do with this she was not happy about it um what i didn't realize was they didn't actually have chips for 30 or like a 10 to make up the 20 um i didn't realize that until tonight after having talked to a few other dancers so they waged thefted me thefted me um at least 10 pounds they've been shafting girls all week i i know it and especially taking advantage of the drunk ones and not paying them properly and not giving them what they're owed um so that happened to me and i'm really fucking fuming to be honest with you like it's not even that it's ten pounds because you know, I mean, <laughs> no, I earned that money. I'm I'm entitled to be fuming, but it's the principle. Like I, just over it. I'm just over it. Tonight was a night. I'm happy to be home early. I'm happy to wash my hands of tonight for what I've put up with overall this week so far. It, it's not worth it it's not worth it if i'm going to take anything away from this week especially if it isn't the money um i have so much knowledge now that's going to really take my hustle to the next level in normal clubs because this is not normal this is not this is like strip clubs <laughs> pardon the metaphor strip clubs on drugs like fuck me this is so intense it's so hardcore it's so cutthroat you ain't seen nothing like this um so if i can survive the rest of this this week i got one more night if i can survive tomorrow night um and fuck i thrived tonight albeit due to luck you know, I've got so many valuable skills and experience to take back to my, you know, to a, a normal hustle. I'm excited to try out new things, try out new skills that I've learned. Maybe it'll be a bit harder. Um, I think that will help me in the long run, to be honest with you. Um, if I can, if I can hack being like that. I'm going to go get to bed now, um, have my bath, have something to eat, um, get some hopefully better sleep tonight than the past two nights and roll on the last fucking night uh i'm so i'm just so excited to be done with this i'm so excited to get home to brandon um i'm excited to get home to my cat i'm just excited to be home um it's it's been really tough sweet sleepy child on me when I know I have a bath to get to. But oh my word. Oh. <laughs> He's so jumpy. He's so sweet though. Yeah, suspicious. I know you're suspicious. Look at you. You're so cute. So cute. I don't know why my maximum sleep time is currently five hours. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've had about another five hours sleep, so over the past three nights, in total, I have had 16 hours sleep. And when you've been working for, what, 30 hours plus, need a bit more than that. Again, like every other night, I can't stop dreaming about uh, being at work and like every every second that I'm not preoccupied by doing something I just totally um, dissociate and um, I'm like replaying things that have happened over the past few nights whether it's traumatic shit whether it's um, just general interactions and it's just really hard for me to like break that um, mental state I, I can be like quite a like I'm very social and very bubbly but 
I like to be on my own um, quite a lot of the time uh, but like I feel like I would have found this experience a lot easier um, if I was here with someone else I think and doing it together so used to like you know coming home to the person that I love and just not having that when having just really shit nights um kind of sucks for me because you know I I've been with Brandon since before I started to do this work and um, he's always been just so supportive and amazing really um, and you know whatever night, kind of night I've had I know that I'm going home to someone that actually knows me to someone that actually loves me um, to someone that accepts me for who I am I don't have to pretend to be the fantasy someone different I can just be me and he loves that like feel like whatever kind of night I've had I can just you know have a bath have a wash let go of the night tuck into bed with him and you know everything's okay whatever whatever's happened everything's okay because I know I'm with him now um and just not having that at the end of the night feels actually quite wrong for me I'm gonna I'm gonna eat a drink um, and then it's a, it's a later start tonight I didn't know that it's a later start it's 8 p.m. so um, I'm, I'm gonna I, I will need sleep later like before I go in tonight managed to get a tiny bit more sleep um, like an hour and a bit um, so that's something um, but as you can hear there's like a massive birthday party going on in the backyard um, I think it's like a school fate or something um, but like the bass my head is killing like you know, I deal with bass all night at work. I just want peace and quiet. Um, during the day, I'm so tired. So, yeah, my head hurts. <laughs> um, I feel a bit less lonely. I had a nice little chat um, with the friend that I'm staying at, um, whose house I'm staying at, and um, that lifted my mood a bit. I feel crap, but that was really nice. So yeah, better get up, better get ready, shower, do all those things, and get on with it. Um, they've cancelled tonight. Uh, my shift's just been cancelled. Um, I got a text saying, call us ASAP. They tried to call me, I was in the shower. Called back right away, and they said, um, yeah, there's not enough girls to warrant running tonight, so um, your shift's cancelled. Um, email us to get your house fee refunded. And I'm like, what? Uh, just because there isn't going to be 200 dancers doesn't mean, like, like they said so many girls are cancelled, but okay, fine, but I don't think probably 150 would have cancelled. Um, like 50 girls would be adequate and actually we'd all make a lot more money and do a lot better so I'd, and we'd still make them enough money because nobody's making money in those fucking keys so I'm re I'm something's going on I don't buy a word of it I don't believe it um, I don't know if it's council related um, because stuff might be might be getting a bit out of hand over the past few nights I don't know. I'm suspicious. I think maybe some of the higher earners 
of the last few nights might have paid the club to rent it out privately to get all of the customers to themselves I I don't know something's going on so I'm not working there tonight I don't know the area so I don't know any clubs around here so I'm just like oh, maybe I'll just have the night off I had friends message me that of course their shifts have been cancelled too um so they're like hey come come work with us <laughs> at this other club so I'm just like do you know what at this point I'm here I might as well fuck it I'm trying to get ready um so my friend's going to work in Cardiff uh, I think it's called Fancy Lounge um I've managed to get in and get a shift it's about an hour and a bit to drive away I don't really fancy the drive but you know what this week has been crazy all round it's about trying new things for me so do you know what Just, <laughs> what can go wrong <laughs> Oh, I have um I have a boy here. Oh yes, I know. Oh yes. Yes. Hi everyone. I'm here with Abile. <laughs> um, we're on our way to go work at Fancy Lounge in Cardiff. We're just walking there now. We had the most craziest shit happen on our journey up. <laughs> um, we're literally seething and fuming massively so earlier when um i spoke to eroticats they said that they would refund my house fee via bank transfer so please email us um, and i said i'm also going to ask for extra compensation because you know i've come a long way you've cancelled late it's not really on um, I knew I probably wasn't going to get the compensation, but it was worth asking and trying. Um, so that was confirmed. We get a call mid-journey, just to me, but you know, Emily's in the car next to me, so she overheard it all. And what a load of bullshit. <laughs> what a load of bullshit. The manager speaks to me and he says, hey, come in, get your house fee. Speaks to you like shit. Speaks to me like fucking shit, first of all, which, you know is fucking standard for this week so i'm kind of used to this by now <laughs> and he says yeah come in get your house fee we'll refund you no worries i say no i say i'm on my way back to sheffield because i'm not i'm not coming in after you you know you've messed me about um you know i'm not coming back please just do it via bank transfer please and thank you <laughs> and uh oh he started off the conversation by saying something about the licensing and dancers cancelling so that was a bit weird and like rumours of the club closing and how nine girls had turned up unexpectedly so you might as well come and get your house fee I say no he says well we can offer you a night's worth of work and I'm like mate you're closed <laughs> and he goes well we've actually we're actually running a private party do you want to come along and I'm like <laughs> what i'm literally nearly home are you joking me i thought you said you were close he's like well we're doing a private party you're welcome to come along i said well i'm not turning back now i need my house fee refunded i need my compensation he's in he started to get really aggy he's like we haven't messed you about um Which you is know counseling yeah. work two hours before you're meant to be there yeah and then saying no actually come and work that is the definition of being messed about. It's, it's li literally, it's in the Oxford English Dictionary. <laughs> Look it up. It is the literal definition. So, uh, yeah. Um, we've missed out on probably what's a fucking fortune. Because some very rich person has probably paid to hire the club and do the private party. Or there's some, there's some kind of corruption and shitty stuff going on. Um... Uh, we, you know, I would be tempted to turn back for probably what would be a very handsome fortune. But you know, we're here in Cardiff. We're going to make the best we're of it. We're going to make loads of money. We're going to make a shit ton of money. <laughs> uh, fuck you, erotic cats, basically, because what a fucking way to end a shitty week. <laughs> too tired um, when I finished work last night to give an update um, 
seen as I got in at 8 and got to bed at 9 in the morning so yeah um, that, that drive was a killer on the way back absolute killer and I dropped my friend off at Bristol um, and then came back to uh, Cheltenham so uh, yeah and I've only had two hours sleep and my body's just like yeah that's enough no body, no it isn't <laughs> oh, it was so nice to be in a club, like an actual club, a nice club like the staff was so nice, I don't know if it's just cause like I've been checked like shit over the past um, you know three nights, or they no they were genuinely lovely, they were so nice um, dancers, lovely stunning club the uh, manager was so nice lovely person lovely guy very decent um, like I was so grateful that he let me work last minute uh, good money um, most of the customers were actually really decent really nice for the most part which I'm pleased about um, yeah it's restored my faith a lot last night and like I needed that like um it's just like oh yeah this is why I do this this is why I love my job this is why I love dancing um because like Cheltenham was just like horrible it was just horrible and like it made me hate my job and even like despite making you know a lot of money on that uh the second night everything's blending into one night now I didn't have fun it wasn't worth it it was horrible um, I hated my life for you know the 10 hours that I was there um, so it was just so nice to like oh, I just loved my job last night I started off the night with um, a guy wanting, a, wanting to see me do a stage show I'm like hell yeah so he paid me like uh, 75 quid to do a stage show, I'm like yes, good, um, beautiful stage, I wish I got a video actually, but you know, um, maybe next time, uh, yeah, so that was really fun, <laughs> there was a bartender that was absolutely smitten with me, like he was so nice, he was so nice, he was so sweet, um, but he just like, he's like, I can't, like, I love you, like, you've got to, like, go away because, you know, I love you. That's just, <laughs> he's very sweet, very funny, um, really great guy, actually, bless his heart. Probably my highlight <laughs> is I had this, um, guy that, he was being really mean to himself and I don't, I don't like that when, like, men or just people in general like really like kind of self-deprecating and talking themselves down like um so you know I was trying to make him feel good about himself trying to make him feel better but it turns out that um his kink is to be humiliated and he likes to be told that he's a worth worthless piece of shit really um so we had a couple of VIPs actually and um I ended up slapping him quite a lot every time he said something mean about himself um and oh do you know what it was so good and he said thank you every time I'm like yeah you better thank me oh god it was just so good because you know I have a lot of pent up anger from the past few nights and like just to get it out a little bit and then he wanted me to like pretend he was a little girl and I'm like yeah mate sure happy to do that um so that was brilliant. I missed out on a guy that um, wanted a small penis humiliation, um, and you know I was more than happy, more than happy to do it because I love doing that kind of shit. Like, yeah, fuck yeah. Um, but I am pleased because my friend got that, and so she got to talk, tell me all about that. And so I found that funny. Do you know what? Like. I've been saying this whole time, this whole trip has been a learning curve for me and oh, the skills that I've learned at Cheltenham helped 
so much. Like, I did really good money last night. Really good money. I'm pleased with what I've made. Um, and I think, you know, having that... Bitchiness is the wrong word because that isn't me. But I have that... A little, little, a little, just a little touch of that now. And, like, the directness. And, like, this is what we're doing. Like, it's yes or no. Um, and just you know, getting what I want from people more, and more importantly, not feeling, um, it's not that I feel bad to make people pay for the service, it's not what I mean, but like, I know, I sometimes feel bad to ask for things, like, I, you know, I sometimes feel bad asking for a tip, asking for more, um, asking for an extra dance, because like, I don't know why that is, I, j I just maybe I don't want to push someone too far, I don't want to coerce someone too far, but after Cheltenham, fuck that, and like, I understood what fuck you pay me meant before, of course I did, but like, that's at the core of my hustle now, like, and that's a good thing, it, it's my job, and um, I don't have to feel bad at all for asking for more like this is what it's about um perhaps it's a little bit more cutthroat perhaps it's a little bit more um treating the customers like they're a wallet but at this point fine i'm happy to do that to be honest um after the shit i've put up with this week that's that's kind of the stage that we're at now for example there was this french guy that was just being real ass like he just kept on asking for sex I'm like no if we can go for a dance and we're gonna go for a dance and we went for a dance um and he's like I want to kiss you I'm like well no being direct about it um I didn't want to sell dreams in that situation because it wasn't worth it to me because I knew he didn't really have that much money um so um no it just wasn't worth it to me I literally the dance ended he'd wasted quite a bit of my time and I was just like yes or no we're going for another dance and he was like no baby stay and all that shit and like I just literally walked away he come back and got me later and we went for another dance and I was like oh so he likes me being direct that's interesting um so I was just like okay I'm just gonna treat you like a bitch now then um I don't care <laughs> It was fantastic. All right, right at the end of the night, I'm just trying to sweep up any last dances that there may be. Most people have gone by this point, and there's this guy in the corner. Um, so I go over. He does that look that I know he doesn't really, really doesn't want to dance. But you know, I go over anyway. You know, I might as well try just one last. You know, kind of um, throw it, throwing the penny in, I guess. And um, we have a li just you know, a little bit of small talk, and I'm like, I'm fucking hilarious. Like I'm being funny. <laughs> um, I'm making him laugh. I'm like, you know, if I take you for a dance, my tits are so beautiful, they're gonna make you cry. And you know, we were just having a bit of bit of bants, really. Um, but he really wasn't. He didn't want to dance at all. Um, but like, he was a nice guy, and uh, I was like. Um, I don't want to dance, no worries, can I have a tip for the, uh, just, you know, entertainment fact, because I'm that funny, and, um, took a little bit more pushing, and he, he wanted me to, like, give me the best fact that I knew, um, so I told him that, like, cats have more bones in their body than humans, which I'm, I'm quite sure that's true, <laughs> and he like that. And we talked a bit more, and um, yeah, he did tip me a little bit, like 10 quid, and I'm like, yeah, do you know what, it's a good way to end the night. So yeah, fab night, restored my uh, faith in the job a lot more. Oh, I didn't even say that. Fuck. Um, I got another call from Erotic Hats. Um, it must have been probably when I just got into the club or when I just got on the floor. I didn't, I didn't take it because I didn't, you know, my phone was on silent and I didn't see it ringing, but they tried to call me another two times. I'm like, I don't know what they were going to say to me. Yeah. Um, 
so oh do you know it's so nice to wear my ring again I just like saw it in the video I'm like I've missed wearing it so much I miss I just miss home uh, it's been a horrible week um, but you know it was a good end to the week um, god damn this I miss home I can't wait to go home um, I've only had a couple of hours sleep two hours sleep I need more um, but so I'm going to try and get a few more hours in before I pack up and uh, drive home um, Brandon's still testing positive but to be honest at this point like I don't really care I just want to be home with him with Ducky and uh, just kind of process really um, yeah it's the first time I've cried in four nights and like I feel like I needed this in hour one of the first night <laughs> oh god so these are my four nights earnings um after house fees bearing in mind I'm hopefully gonna get um my house fee back refunded from two pigs for the fourth night loss of work from them and maybe some more um and bear in mind this doesn't take into account things like parking um, and fuel which is incredibly expensive at the minute uh, food and just like other things not even to mention like outfits makeup like everything like that um, so this is kind of like my <laughs> semi growth profit because obviously that house fee um, has been taken into account in, in these two so you got £20 for the first night um, because like they took quite a lot for the house fees so 20 quid 655 1215 860 so altogether that is 2750 I'm just sorting them into their denominations now it just makes it easier and then when I take it to the bank uh, they don't get angry at me <laughs> um the figure that i had in my mind minimum um when i take into account like my expenses and shit that's the minimum that i wanted to make um like obviously this is a shit ton of money it's an awful lot of money but it's not what i expected from such a big event um, for paying such a high house fee, having to deal with as much shit as I dealt with. But hey, look, I'm pleased I'm taking this home. That makes me happy-ish. Was it worth it? Honestly, I'd have rather taken the fourth night at a fancy lounge home any night of the week. Like, fuck the ground in a bit. Like, that was just awful the way I had to earn that money. And being in the environment that I was in, I would take the lower price and I'd go with the, you know, 800 odd quid um, because, you know, I had a much better night. I was treated like an actual human. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of the lowdown on the money. Okay, folks, I'm just going to do this summary uh, without video because my phone ran out of storage. So <laughs> you're just going to have to put up with my voice for the end part of this video. Um, I'm home now, Brandon tested clear a few days later after coming home and we are now reunited. I'm really enjoying being back in my safe space um, but it's going to take a while for me to process everything. I won't rehash the points I already made in my video about erotic hats but I will re-emphasise how rude many of the staff were to me to the point of me feeling like a criminal and dehumanised at times. Some of the staff were great but so many were really rude, unprofessional and made what is supposed to be a fun environment into what felt like a living nightmare for me. Obviously this trip did not live up to my expectations other than how intense the experience was. Speaking to a few dancers that have been going there for years said that they've never experienced it the way that it was this year in 2022. Um, 
One dancer said it was rumoured that a contract with another erotic arts club had fallen through and so all of those dancers were squeezed into two pigs as well. That would explain why things went down the way that they did. Hearing some other dancer experiences um, kind of pertaining to the staff at Erotic Hats was genuinely shocking for me to hear. For example, you know, despite there being way too many dancers, the staff wouldn't let a dancer check out early due to a family emergency. I spoke to Erotic Cats after I nudged them to re refund me my house fee um, and they gave again just a mix of reasons as to why Saturday was cancelled, some the same, some different to when we last spoke. Um, this time they were very adamant that um, it was two pigs that had cancelled the venue for them and so they had to cancel us but then they kept saying that it was because the dance, too many dancers had cancelled, but kind of citing the reason for them cancelling was because of the rumours of two pigs opening as usual, so that was quite confusing. They also mentioned the council last time, um, and I asked about that again, but they kind of dodged that, so it seemed to me there were, were a lot of conflicting reasons. While they were in the mood for chatting, I thought I'd ask about the private party and how that went, but they did move the conversation on quite quickly. They said they would refund me um, for my travel as well as my house fee. So I've got my 105 house fee back and an extra £95 in compensation, which I'm genuinely really grateful of and happy to have that. I wouldn't have expected the compensation. Um, I do have this money in my bank now, luckily. While I had them on the phone, I asked if they would like to hear my feedback um, as I had some complaints, you know, just while I had them on the phone. <laughs> I relayed my experiences onto them, um, you know, I got it all out there and most complaints were met with a whole host of bogus excuses. Let me just give you a few quickly. Um, their reason for excusing poor staff treatment of dancers was because they needed to make sure everything was by the book and dancers were not exploiting the club or the customers and were blaming dancers for being wholly ruthless um, as to why I experienced that treatment. Just going to leave that there. Um, they were adamant that they had not overbooked dancers and that it was in fact there were too many customers. They denied that there were 200 dancers or even 150 dancers each night but refused to divulge to me how many there actually were when insisting that regardless of the number, because I don't know exactly how many they were, there were, regardless of the, the number, they did not have the facilities to cater to all of us, which is true. Um, in response to that, they boasted about how one girl had made 12k and that next year they'll be opening a super club and it's going to be bigger and better because they just did not expect how busy it was going to be. The only thing they were concerned about was the fact that I was not offered uh, the courtesy car to take me to my transport upon leaving the venue. I thought that this was only available to customers and then I realised it was for dancers too but thought I wasn't entitled to it because it wasn't at the end of the night. They did seem actually genuinely shocked and upset that I had to walk home on my own and the bouncers or transport staff didn't make this clear or known to me. He said he would go back through the CCTV and send an email, uh, which is good. It's a shame he didn't seem as concerned uh, by the rest of my experiences and merely suggested for me to be taken off the mailing list. I explained that it's not that I would never want to work there again, but I would want it to be better and I thought they were open to hearing the feedback. Um, so yeah, don't, you know, yeah, I don't need to go into that, do I? My aim of putting this information out there is not to get Erotic Cats shut down. I don't want this space to go. It is, however, to demand reform in our industry. I hope Erotic Cats continue to run their events during race weeks and I hope they consider improving their system 
for dancers or, you know, I, God, I hope a better company comes along that wants to do it better. Um, if you've made it this far, number one, I'm totally shocked. Number two, thank you. And lastly, you know, you've come this far, please go read this short article detailing more about um, sex worker rights pertaining to this situation. Um, the link is in the description, easy to access. Experiences like this is why we so badly need to unionise as dancers and make change happen within our industry. It's obviously safe to say that until things have changed, I would never choose to work at Erotic Cats again. This has been a wild roller coaster for me, and thanks for listening to my experiences. I can't say I'd do another vlog again, but if you'd like me to, let me know in the comments and feel free to give my video a little like. If you'd like to support me further, you can buy my dance class recordings on my Buy Me a Coffee. You can also tip me via my Buy Me a Coffee or Cash App. And um, yeah. Much love to you all. Thanks.